Sometimes life is unfair. Lazy idiots sit on their asses doing nothing and get all the fame and fortune, while the real hard workers bust theirs, do all the work themselves, and eventually get very little or even nothing at all. Many bands out there are criminally underappreciated. Most people act like they don't even exist, despite the tremendous talent that they possess. These bands haven't been lucky enough to make it to mainstream success back in their day when there were tapes and vinyl records or on today's stage, social media. I'm on Man Covers and these are the top 10 most underrated metal bands ever. Like and subscribe. In 2001, Metallica bassist for nearly 15 years, Jason Newstead, left the f***ing band for quote, private and personal reasons and went on to start his own first project echo brain and successfully release an album after working with ozzy osbourne voivod and others and in 2012 jason formed his own band newstead newstead released a four song ep metal and a debut studio album heavy metal music sadly the band suddenly went inactive two years later and then ceased to exist jason said that the project had cost him a lot of money and wasn't profitable. You could see that just by searching Newstead on YouTube. Not much music, not much views. Cold Driven was a Canadian band with lots and lots of passion for music. Two studio albums, one EP. The EP, The Wicked Side of Me, which was their last release before deciding to stop making music, has some of the most amazing songs you'll ever hear. The title track, is a perfect example and one of my personal favorite songs to listen to at any time. Unfortunately, and even with all that passion, Cold Driven was not able to reach worldwide success. Perhaps they would have had they not quit. Perhaps. No doubt about it, Anthrax is one of the best and most popular thrash metal bands. They're even one of the big four alongside Metallica, Megadeth, and Slayer. This band has some music that's just as high quality as Metallica's. Listen to Spreading the Disease, Among the Living, Persistence of Time, and Worship Music. And I promise you won't say any different. Yet they got stuck in the circle of mediocrity, labeled as a B plus band. They even tried experimenting with elements of hip hop music, and it wasn't enough. Venom is a band that not only has made outstanding music, but was also responsible for starting a whole new genre. With the controversial satanic lyrical themes and imagery and extreme sound, Venom is considered as the first inspiration for black metal. The band played raw, fast, and heavy, and embraced a lo-fi sound, making it a distinction rather than a downside. However, Venom is also one of those bands that have been overlooked, despite in fact being such a major influence for many of the top ones, like Slayer and Metallica. Two years ago, I watched a very cool film called Deathgasm. The story is about a fictional metal band of the same name. The soundtrack included some amazing songs, mostly from the new wave of British heavy metal and the more extreme subgenres. But one song that did not only catch my ear but also blew my freaking mind and instantly got me hooked was called Hour to Live by a band called Skullfist. After finishing Deathgasm, I went onto YouTube to hear more of the band. Another song I fell in love with was Bad For Good, from the same album as Hour to Live, Chasing the Dream. This band is just too amazing to be underappreciated. Overlooking this band is a damn crime. Chasing the Dream was released in 2014, yet the band somehow kept the 80s glam sound. They are so gifted. The guitar duo is amazing. The vocalist is a god. The music is so rich and satisfying. 
I still cannot believe or understand how such outstanding talent could be ignored. Am I Evil is an anthem, a heavy metal anthem. It's been covered thousands and thousands of times. The Diamond Head themselves have admitted that most of the royalties are from Metallica covering them live over and over again. Metallica recorded the cover for the 1998 Garage Incorporated, and many of Metallica's fans have thought the song's an original. Admit it, you too have. The point is, the band has been one of the most influential but overlooked forces of the new wave of British heavy metal. Despite being pushed into a higher level of commercial success thanks to Metallica and the other bands that have covered them and admitted their influence, Diamond Head remain in the mid-card. Every song by Serge Tankian is underrated. This man is a damn genius. His songs are brilliant. Despite being the frontman of System of a Down, one of the most popular metal bands right now, and the band that wrote Chop Suey, the song that reached 1 billion views on YouTube, Tankian has not been able to reach the same level of success as his band. Make no mistake though, I am not saying he's not at all appreciated. He's a much respected musician and artist. But listen to his songs. Harakiri is a masterpiece, Lie Lie Lie, Empty Walls, Sky Is Over, and even some of the tracks from the new record, Elasticity, are as well amazing. He has definitely made it as a solo artist, he just deserves much better recognition. While Diamond Head has made a metal anthem, Motorhead has many, Ace of Spades, Killed by Death, Overkill, and more. The band has also released not 10, not 20, but 23 f***ing albums. All that work, that big ass discography, hasn't been enough for Motorhead to get to the top where they deserve. Maybe the problem was the repetition in their music, cause let's face it, they were like the ACDC of metal. They never really changed their style or sound, and perhaps that kept them from impressing more people. Actually, Metallica covered them too, but the same thing happened to them. Chuck Schuldiner wrote almost every death song. He was a musician of very remarkable talent. In fact, every musician who has been part of death throughout its 15 year career is tremendously gifted. The band was one of the earliest, most influential and innovative death metal acts. They were very versatile, heavy and melodic, brutal and delicate. Songs like Zombie Ritual, Crystal Mountain, Empty Words, Spirit Crusher, Voice of the Soul and many more are perfect examples. Death has been very successful for a band that made extreme music, but not the most successful. There have been more commercially prosperous death metal bands that conversely, or maybe ironically, made less impressive music. You know who the hell I'm talking about. Just before we get to number one, here's a very honorable mention. It is Necrophagist, the mind-blowing tech death band. I remember the first time hearing Staboon from their second album, Epitaph, and I don't think I've ever been so wowed. The whole lineup is made up of unbelievable talent. Unfortunately, their second record was also their last before disbanding. And perhaps that's the reason why they're not as popular or acknowledged as you'd imagine a band like Nakalfagus should be. Megadeth is the most criminally underrated band ever. Just like Death, every Megadeth member, current or former, alive or dead, is or was an amazingly aspiring musician. Gar Samuelson, Chris Poland, Jeff Young, Nick Menza, Marty Friedman, Al Petrelli, Glenn Drover, James Lomenzo, Chris Adler, and David Ellefson. Yes, even after whatever he's done, he's still awesome as fuck. And then there's Dave fucking Mustaine. The singer no one sounds like, part of the trinity of rhythm guitar in the metal world alongside James Hetfield and Malcolm Young, as Dave himself has said recently. A great lead guitar player and a very capable songwriter. What else? What else do you want me to say about Dave? What else do you want me to say about Megadeth? I'll tell you more. The band has written songs that are difficult, heavy and fast as fuck, but has also made slow, melodic and memorable ones. They have tried everything, from the most extreme of metal, to the riskiest of pop, 
pun intended. Megadeth is one of the few bands that have everything from the easiest riff ever to the very hardest. At one point, Megadeth was in fact the top rival for Metallica, and in 1992, the band peaked at number 2 on the Billboard 200 with the album Countdown to Extinction. But yeah, that was that. They lost to none other than Billy Ray Cyrus. The only two times Megadeth got so close to the top again was two years later when they released Euthanasia and reached number 4, and in 2016 with Dystopia at number 3. Yet, it kills me to see that these are all the views and subscribers Megadeth has on YouTube. I hate it every time I think that, even with all the quality in their records, Megadeth has never hit number one, and much like almost every other band on this list, has been very influential, but very overlooked. Thank you for watching I Am One Man Covers, please subscribe to the channel, I'll see you next time.